I challenged myself to create my first cinematic using Unreal Engine. As an animator, I always wanted to make something more than just these grey and flat play blasts. And now, time has come. Thanks to Unreal Engine, I can effortlessly turn my animations to a final product, with a beautiful lighting and visual effects. And in this video, I will share the process of creating my first cinematic. Let's get started! Every project starts with the search for references. My references will be cinematic from Blizzard and sword fight scenes from anime. I use YouTube and Pinterest for search. Regarding my own ideas, I look for something similar in the references. Gather all content and combine it into one video. Also, I use Pure for image references. When it comes to planning, there is no need to rush. Taking breaks is essential to come back and look at everything with fresh perspective. When you like today, might seem like a bad idea tomorrow. So, take your time and think twice. I spent two weeks for planning. I'll be doing the final build and rendering in Unreal Engine. Animation in Maya. As an environment, I'll be using this map. You can download it for free from Epic Marketplace. It's called Stylized Eastern Village. Thanks to the creator. The character is Genji from Overwatch. I need healing. Links for download are in the description. In a scene, there will be two Genji. So I decided to retexture them right away. I did this through Photoshop and Substance Painter. Since the character will interact with the environment, it's crucial to load the map into Maya. This ensures that when importing the animation into Unreal, everything falls into place and manual adjustments won't be necessary. For this to work, coordinates of the animation file in Unreal must be at zero. Once the idea and references are approved, I move on to creating the previous. This is a rough version of the scene, a kind of blocking. Here I set up cameras, find suitable angles, pose the characters approximately, check timings, overall movement feelings, tempo and more. I spend another two weeks for this. Once the previsualization is done, it is time to create animation. Actually, it is quite simple. Set the pose, another pose, and one more. The program will calculate in between frames, and it's done. <laughs> Just kidding. In reality, it's much more complex. To truly create good animation, you need to know about basic principles like Timing, spacing, squash and stretch, overlapping action and follow, anticipation, exaggeration, you should know how to use graphic, parents, frame rate, camera in perspective, acting, use script, or press a button and let AI do it all for you. Honestly, animation is a vast and complex subject to feed all into one video. But I'll definitely cover all these topics in future videos. So, don't forget to subscribe. I'm just starting my journey on YouTube and would greatly appreciate your support. Nevertheless, let me quickly show you some tricks that I use in my shots. Firstly, I want to highlight the importance of camera animation. For example, this shot. Here, I animated camera's focal length attribute to enhance the sense of speed and dynamic. Also, camera shake to give more impact. Just take a look at the animation without these tricks. Quite a difference, isn't it? The power of the camera is even more evident in this shot. Looking from the side, we see that the character actually doesn't move, just spins in place. But in camera, all good. It's kinda cheating, but I didn't really care what happening off screen, because all that matters is what we see on final view. Here's the first version of the scene. As you can see, it's less dynamic and looks slow. The camera is animated only one axis, which is boring. This shot was the hardest one. I spent a lot of hours trying to find rhythm and pace, and for the first time in my animation workflow, I decided to use sound effects in advance, which I usually do in post-production. And this decision was a game changer. Because now, with the help of references, previews and sound effects, it was not really difficult to create a blocking of the scene, which is even closer to the final animation. All I need now is just polish it. 
adding in between frames to smooth out the transition between key poses. Animating cloth, trails and pushing some details. Since that, I'm even more convinced that sound is very important in animation. The simplest shots can become more appealing and readable. So take it as a note. And as a bonus, one tip, especially for beginners. Learn to animate simple objects first. Cube, balls, whatever. Learn to feel timing and rhythm. After all, principles of animation apply equally to complex character and primitive objects. If you can make a bouncing ball look good, you'll be able to make full-fledged character jumps look good too. So don't rush and invest time in basics. All 13 shots in 20 seconds took me 10 weeks. Now we can start working on lighting and visual effects to transform these dull, grey scenes into cinematic. To do this, transfer all animations to Unreal Engine. I'll be using a Lambic Cache format. Select the character, click Cache, Export Selection to Alembic. Choose Time Range, check these boxes and hit Export. Go to Unreal, click Import, change Import Type to GeoCache, set X Rotation to 90 degrees and hit Import. To see the animations in Unreal, we need to create a sequencer. Then just drop the file into sequencer, press Track, Geometry Cache. Done. Let's transfer camera. Click export. I'll be using the FBX format. Bake the camera in advance. Then in sequencer, click import. To ensure everything is transferred correctly, use these settings. Next, change the format. Adjust the camera focus. You can check this box to better see the focus area. And it's ready. Let's see how to set up characters' materials. Drag the textures. In order to control their properties, use constant and multiply nodes. But for normal map, use flat normal node instead of multiply. For the character's glow, I utilized an alpha mask created in Photoshop. Let's see how to set up material for glowing. Create color node, value node, and combine them all using two multiply nodes and connect to emissive color. Then convert all constant and color nodes to parameters to be able to see them in material instance. Create material instance from master material and apply it to the character. And here you can see all that nodes you converted to parameters, which gives you more control. Very convenient. In case, if you see the material only on one side, go to Master Material and check Two-Sided Box. For second Genji, there is no need to create material from scratch. Just convert texture nodes to parameters, create another material instance, and change the textures and colors. Easy! Let's go to set up environment lights. Since everything takes place at night, there are lots of light sources. However, the main ones are the directional light and exponential high fog. I use specific settings to give the light a bluish tint and create an atmospheric fog. Throughout the process, I added additional sources where needed, utilizing point lights and rectangle lights. I also used Gobo material to create more interesting shadows. There is nothing complicated in light settings. Just play around with the values, understand what each parameters control and rely on references and personal tastes. I recently delved into the topic of lighting, so I can recommend tutorials from William. He explains things in more detail. Here's how I set up the moon material. I leave a link to the texture. Additionally, I created an alpha mask to generate glow in specific areas, using the same technique I mentioned earlier. Create a sphere, assign a material and apply the necessary values. Clouds are simpler. I downloaded them from the Django FX. 
you also need to download the sparse volumetric plugin. Links for download and installation will be in the description. After that, just drag the clouds into the scene and adjust the appropriate values. You can play with density, brightness and color. Remember, all these values can be animated. For example, I animated the brightness or intensity of the light to enhance the moment when the swords clash. It's simple but effective method. Sparks. I created them with Niagara using a ready-made preset. I changed the color, size and particle speed. I needed a fast and vibrant effect. To see the sparks at the desired time, transfer it to the sequencer. Click track, Niagara component, life cycle track. Now you can control the timing of the effect. You might encounter an issue where particles do not blur on the camera. To fix this, go to the effects material, find the translucent pass tab and set it to before dove. This will resolve the blurring issue. All animations are loaded, materials, lightings and effects are configured and now it's time to start rendering. First, choose the camera from the sequencer. Also, uncheck the lock to display at runtime option to achieve better quality in motion blur. You can adjust motion blur settings in camera parameters. Next, go to the render settings. Choose the PNG format, add anti-aliasing, console variables, select the path and click render local. Done. That easy. The final montage and sound design were done in Premiere Pro. To see the render sequence as a video, click on import, select the first frame and check this box. Add sound effects, make some color correction and the project is done. Let's finish this quickly. Oh,